everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Before we get into the video for Giga Texas, I just want to remind you that I recently did a drone flight over Corpus Christi. It's the 11 March video. I was able to take my Cybertruck on its very first trip there. We saw a lot of activity on the main site, as you can tell by that image. This is the render of what that area will eventually look like. And uh, this is uh, from the road, and I can also see the kiln and the cooler and that installation that was going on. Uh, in addition to that, we get some different perspectives of the uh, infrastructure that is going on around this area. They're starting to construct the second parallel line. We see a lot of the footings and the slabs for the hydro metallurgical processing and here the final processing section for the lithium hydroxide. We also get a good sense of the warehouse, some of the north staging location, and some of the materials for that second part of the uh, production site. So make sure you check a look at this video. It's my 11 March video. The link will be in the video description below. And I go into quite a bit of detail about what is going on at that plant. Now, in addition to that, this trip was my first time with my Cybertruck. I put a thousand miles on the truck during I, my trip down to Corpus Christi and Starbase. I did this video where I talk about the reactions of the Cybertruck, my uh, experiences on that trip, some of the things that I like, some of the things that I think can be improved with the Cybertruck. And uh, as you can see, just the reaction was amazing you know, so many people interested in the truck the kids know everything there is to know about it um, driving it was extremely uh, uh, pleasant experience it was quiet it was powerful um, very unlike a truck and uh, you can also you know get an appreciation for how it maneuvers on the roads and the beach and I got a chance to go to the Boca Chica Beach as well and uh, we also talk a little bit about some of the uh, cleaning of the vehicle, especially the uh, front windshield, uh, some photo shoots that we did, how the uh, efficiency and the charging was like, and just a whole lot of other uh, impressions over a thousand miles of ownership with the Cybertruck. Now, the video itself will be linked in this video description. Um, and I would recommend you take a look at that. You can see just how many people were uh, I was able to meet up with and they came out and showed appreciation for the Cybertruck, including the spring break crew down at uh, South Padre Island getting ready for the launch. And of course, a thousand miles on the odometer. Uh, overall, just some great experiences, and I ran into another Cybertruck owner on my supercharging on the way back. So make sure you check a look at this video and uh, get some information about what it's like to own a Cybertruck and drive it for the first thousand miles. So now let's get into the drone. Let's fly around and see what Giga Texas looks like today. If you would like to support my efforts, please consider using these links, which will be in the video description. If you are interested in Tesla products, you can help yourself and support me by using my referral code. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on my YouTube video as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. Well, good morning from a very rainy early morning and also low clouds and a little bit of fog made me delay my flight about uh, two hours. So uh, you can see the aftermath of all the rain here, especially on this north end, waiting for that earthwork to be completed and then the paving for the north part of the outbound lot. Speaking of which, the outbound lot is very busy again today. 
There is many cyber trucks interspersed within the Model Ys on both sides, and uh, you can also see trucks are very busy picking up some of the uh, vehicles and transporting them off site. In fact, it just seems like that's a constant process these days. As I maneuver over towards this side of the outbound lot, you can see a lot of cyber trucks, and I'm gonna give you much closer views of all of these here shortly. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm scanning the lot to see if there are any refresh Model 3s. And that's because on my previous video, I was able to see about five of them here in the outbound lot. Now, I think the mystery is solved in the fact that Giga Texas may just be a transport hub. So some of the Model 3s may come through the railhead, they're brought over here, and then this is used for distribution throughout Texas. So um, that is most likely what is going on with the Model 3 ref refreshes here. But uh, I did not see any today, at least in this video segment. If you happen to see any that I missed, let me know. But uh, so let's continue looking at the west side of the end of line. More of the trenching here. We see a large black pipe, uh, most likely what they're installing to those trenches. Of course, the uh, test track on the left, and you can see with those uh, orange and white dividers as well along the uh, entire west side. There's also some rumble strips too, and some bumps that they uh, drive the new vehicles over. Here's a good look at many of the cyber trucks, some of which with flashing lights, probably getting a software update. They're also around this tent. And take a look at all of these near the supercharger station, especially on the south end. Uh, I think that there are several hundreds, probably three to 400 across Giga Texas today. And this is just some of the cyber trucks that we will see. And it certainly looks like they need to continue paving so that they have more of that uh, parking space. They're also using the east side here of the end of line for more of the cyber trucks as well. If you happen to be in the local area and you're driving on the highway that you see on the right, you can pull over and easily see all of these cyber trucks. It's just uh, uh, maybe 30 meters away from the road, so great visibility if you're in the area. Now, as I continue to maneuver to the north end of the end of line facility, just wanted to show you how the work continues with that glassed in area, which is a cafeteria, and also some of those roll up doors. And of course, the cyber trucks on the left and the outbound lot. Uh, uh, on the upper right. So I'm going to fly up over the end of line facility and of course the test track, a good view of that here as we fly towards the south and across all of these cyber trucks again. And let's go take a look at the boring tunnel and there are some developments there today. Crews at the Boring Tunnel and the Proof Rock 3 are busy today. Uh, some of it is getting ready the equipment on the right with the black tarps. Some people are working underneath that blue tarp. And you can see the cutter head has had all of the dirt moved up right next to the cutter head. Uh, in fact, uh, more than half of it is now covered with that dirt. It's still in that pit. It looks like they're getting ready for that boring operation to commence. There are workers on the left-hand side, and I saw that one of them is underneath the front edge of the Proof Rock 3. You may see some welding flashes here shortly, but they're doing a little bit of welding work right near the uh, cutter head itself. And it looks like they're doing some final preparations to get this starting to tunnel. The fact that all the dirt has been moved there is a great sign and is a big change from my last video. As I continue to maneuver around, this is a really good view of the entire operations. Uh, you can see that uh, belt and the conveyor underneath those beams and that A-frame structure on the middle of the screen. And on the left, you can see that belt cassette. You can see the roller under, over those uh, kind of yellow and white truss items. And all of this is in final setup for that uh, tunneling operation. Looks like more of the support infrastructure in and around where those three cement silos are for the grout mix 
is very busy and we can also see more of the concrete tunnel segments have been delivered and are in the process of being delivered on the bottom and right hand side of the screen and since they're moving them all over here next to the tunnel uh, boring machine this is a great sign that they're going to be needed here soon from this perspective, you can look across the highway where that boring tunnel is going to go, and it still is lined up with that opening in the perimeter grade beam of that new steel structure on the south end. As we crossed over the highway, uh, give you a closer view of what's going on here on the south end. First, more cyber trucks being stored in this Southwest Temporary Storage Facility. It looks to me like uh, about a dozen are here as well. And typically these are waiting for some parts before they are ready uh, to be moved over to the outbound lot. The southwest corner of the main factory and the building extension is really taking shape. You can see that uh, there is a kind of a first floor mezzanine in that corner and then the second floor all that's being framed in and additional steel work is underway. This opening in the perimeter grade beam on the left of the screen is possibly where that boring tunnel may be entering into the building but we will see soon as that boring tunneling operation commences. On this southwest corner we can see that trapezoidal open atrium section and again an opening in that perimeter grade beam possibly a entrance on this side of the angled corner. There is a similar one that is taking shape on the southeast angled corner as well. As I maneuver closer into the facility, you can see that uh, more of the decking has been put on the left-hand side. Trenching on the ground floor is continuing. A lot of water on the upper floor where all the concrete is. That's partly because of all the rains that we just had this morning. Some pretty big thunderstorms came through. And of course, the excavation on the left has got a mud base that has been poured in there now. And that's preparation for more concrete. And of course, rebar has been put in too. The work on the frame for the windows continues and of course a large section of the windows has been installed on the south end more of the windows are being stored here in those wooden crates ready for installation and it looks like there's a cyber truck uh, supervising the operations here as well good view of more of the glass on the left and the extended steel structure on this section and of course there's that opening that I had mentioned in the perimeter grade beam which may be another entrance way on this side of the building. This is a good view of this center section still awaiting the steel structure and the filling in of this gap. And it's also a good look at this west side and how it is shaping up with some of that floor decking that's being installed. There's also roof decking that's been uh, put out on the, uh, the columns and the beams and that's getting ready for installation as well. Now I have had some viewers ask why did they approach the construction this way where the steel structures on the right we have the old building on the left and then this open section right now in the middle. And I'm not really sure. Obviously, it was a consideration that they wanted to get this going this way. It could be because of the fact that uh, there is Cybertruck production going on. You can see the exit out of the building and where they are being uh, temporarily staged next to those tanks. Uh, so that may have played into it. It might be related to the boring tunnel or there could be some other reasons. But all of the footings are in place, so we should start seeing more of the steel structure uh, put around this section. And of course, these four large tanks that have had their uh, tops put in, the railing and the piping. And I've had a viewer say that it appears that the pressure testing for those tanks has also been completed. Now, I'm going to maneuver the drone back to look across the entire new south extension. It's a good view of how this looks and puts into perspective where those tanks are, the cyber trucks waiting to be moved to the uh, testing lot, the exit point in that stamping extension where the cyber trucks come out, and of course, the steel structure with the glass waiting for installation on the bottom of the center of the screen. And as I maneuver a little bit more, just to give you a good view of how this extension looks with the rest of the structure, and of course, the very low 
ceilings. It's uh, just above the drone at this point in time. So I'm going to maneuver over the power lines, bring the drone down just a little bit uh, more so we can get some better visibility, and then take a look at this extension of River Road that is uh, being prepared uh, from that intersection on the left where the concrete ends through all of the tree belt and in between the two ponds. And once this is all prepared, we'll see that river road come through this section. And then there will be an intersection on the right-hand side of the screen. And that's where it will turn north and become Robotic Avenue. And that goes along the entire east side parking lot. As we continue to fly over that new intersection and some of these steel corrugated pipes so before the underground water management system, here's a good view of the multi-level parking garage. It has reached its eastmost bound boundary, and we can see that on the left. It's rapidly filling in now with the uh, uh, remaining structure on this east side. And then on the north side, most of it has reached its northward uh, boundaries as well. So we just have this angled section in between the two yellow cranes left to have assembly. And then of course they will do all the concrete work on the rest of the structure and all seven levels, very similar to what we see on the right hand side of the screen next to these two ramps for the vehicles. There are crew uh, starting to put the rebar mesh on the next large section of the uh, roof, and then that will be filled with concrete as well. From what I can tell, and you can see it on the bottom of the screen, most of the ground floor on the west side has been poured in concrete. And they've worked their way about halfway, uh, maybe a quarter of the way through the length of the building right now on the ground floor. I'll bring the drone down a little lower so you can see the work that's underway here uh, with that newly poured concrete section and then more of that rebar and mesh that's being prepared for installation. good view of the activity in the testing and calibration lot. Also the Rainmaker at the bottom of the screen with that orange door and the wind tunnel on the right. We're flying over the uh, helicopter pad and then a good view of just all of the Cybertrucks, all of the Model Ys. And uh, from my cursory look, I did not see any of the Model 3. So again, I think uh, as we talked earlier in the video, the uh, premise that they're using this as a transport hub, and that's why we saw those Model 3s on my previous video on the West Outbound lot is probably true. I'm gonna zoom in here next to these uh, five new receiving doors. We can see that uh, temporary retraining or that retaining wall on the left has been installed and they're preparing the ground for more concrete. Also some of the enclosures for those receiving doors are getting ready to be assembled. Very similar to what we see here in this section where the concrete apron uh, is uh, in the process of being prepared for more of the uh, concrete pour. And of course they will finish those enclosures. Many castings on the ground for the cyber trucks and casting racks around these uh, power uh, towers that uh, support all the power lines. As we continue to get closer to the east side of the casting machine structure, this uh, construction site uh, continues to get those screw type piers installed. You can see many of them sticking up out of the ground and the holes that have been prepared. More of them are waiting in those bundles for installation. This is most likely an extension to the building of some sort and it's being prepared for some heavy loads, but I'm not sure if it's heavy enough for a casting machine, but it could be for other equipment and machinery. So something to watch. So as we fly over the East uh, parking lot and Robotic Avenue and the overflow lot for all of the employee vehicles on the upper left right of the screen, we can see how Tesla Road's extension work is uh, Continuing, although at a slow pace, some of the earthwork on both sides of what will eventually be Tesla Road here. And then the south end of the die shop shows those two uh, retaining walls along where there will be a loading ramp. And of course, the large section that has been prepared with uh, geotextile membranes and dirt for asphalt in the near future. Along the west side, we can see the preparation work for most likely concrete and asphalt along this entire section. More work has been done on the berms on the left to 
probably control some of the erosion that has been going on with all the rains. And this is a good view of how the west side looks with uh, the prepared soil, uh, some of the uh, spreaded uh, newer soil, that lighter soil here as well. And this is all being prepared for asphalt in the near future. The lift station on the left of the screen has had the generator removed. You can see those electronic boxes. So it looks like it's got its own power now and is operational. It's a good look at the north end of the cathode building with the trailers at the receiving doors. And then as we fly back to the south along this uh, paved section, we can see some crews busy with uh, some of these uh, equipment uh, share tanks and tanker trucks. And uh, as we continue to fly a little bit further to the south, that uh, temporary platform with that uh, uh, rubbish chute and the uh, rubbish bin seems to be active. We can see how the groundwork looks. And of course, the chiller plant uh, is getting a lot of activity. There's a new scaffolding that has been installed between the Evapco fan units and of course along that wall. So that suggests we're gonna see some additional construction underway in this section, possibly taking some pipes from the chiller plant up along the walls and to the roof section, perhaps. All four of the stainless steel tanks have now been installed. You can see that catch basin kind of small wall around those four um, foundations for the tanks. And I would imagine since we just saw those two tanks on the right and uh, moved for installation on my previous video, that they still have some connections to do to finish this out. And here's a good overall view looking straight down at the chiller plant and that new scaffolding that reaches up to the uh, roof of the cathode plant. Now, as we fly over the cathode plant, a uh, big change on the south end of the crash test facility, which is that rounded uh, roofed uh, building that you see in the center and left. And that is this uh, dunk tank has got a new water tank. Uh, you can see that round water, white water tank on those uh, kind of that uh, stand with all those legs. My previous video, we actually saw the truck arriving with these items. So those have been installed within the last 48 hours. Of course, water in that tank as well. And it seems like the purpose of that is in case uh, either there is a battery fire during a crash testing or they may be uh, putting structural packs into that as testing to see if they can induce uh, some sort of uh, a negative reaction so they can do some testing. But uh, that seems to be operational now. The water detention pond with the inflow channels, some of the berm uh, erosion control mesh on the right, the filtration system in the bottom with all of the water because of the rains and of course some of the gravel. So this continues to be a site for development. The wade pit it looks like it's full again because of all the rains that we've had, but uh, they do have fencing on either end. So I don't think it's being used right now. Certainly I haven't seen it being used in a while. The northeast corner uh, this construction area where they've done earthwork on the upper right, you can see that rental equipment lot and some of the concrete that has been uh, taken from the east side of the casting machine structure where we saw that expansion work going on. Of course, the two stainless steel tanks on the left are no longer there because they were moved and we saw that happening in my previous video. And those other kind of shiny tanks are waiting for movement in the near future. So a lot of great progress here at the uh, battery cathode plant and the die shop complex of structures. So let's fly over to the uh, old temporary electrical switchyard and see how it looks today. Not much to see here anymore. All of the equipment, all of the superstructure, the trailers for the controls, and even the underground copper grid that was used for grounding has been removed. So it's in the final disassembly and uh, rehabilitation process right now. And then we'll see what Tesla does with that property. Going over the power lines again, I'll just give you a quick view of the fully operational Megapack site. And it is connected to the grid and Giga Texas, two primary for purposes. One is to provide backup power to Giga Texas and two is to help stabilize the grid in the Austin area. So it's great to see this very large Megapack system 
uh, working and supporting Giga Texas and the local community. As we fly over Tesla Road, I'll bring you into the northwest corner of the main factory where construction continues to build out the next four production lines for the 4680s. There's been a lot of uh, talk about 4680s in the news lately. Uh, just uh, my previous video, Tesla had announced that they are now making one week's worth of Cybertruck production of uh, the 4680s every week. So that supports about 4,000 Cybertrucks per week and uh, correction per month and that is a significant increase in the production capabilities here for the cyber trucks and that translates to what we're seeing on the ground especially on the east and the west outbound lots and temporary uh, testing lots and all that we saw earlier in the early part of the video as we fly along the northeast corner of casting, just a good view of the widened berm, all of the concrete with the casting racks that have been installed, all of the furnace flues and parts have been moved inside for assembly. So all we're seeing is just some various equipment and a lot of castings. And of course, here's a good view looking at this expansion area, those screw type piles that are being installed, how this is looking right now. And on the left, you can see more of those screw type piles waiting for their turn to be uh, installed and strengthen this for this expansion area. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you is in the roof section here uh, next to the enclosures and the fan units on the right, you can see all of these pipes that run through the bottom of the screen and then on the left along the parapet wall. And I'm going to follow this all the way down because this has been a relatively recent addition to Giga Texas. Uh, a lot of these pipe works, those uh, stands that hold up the pipes, all of this has been installed um, and it continues about halfway the length of the factory to approximately this point here. And then it takes a 90 degree turn and works its way over to this part of the factory. So it's kind of an interesting uh, addition. I'm not exactly sure what this is for. But I've had some viewers ask me to give a full length view of those pipes and the installation. So hopefully that helps address at least what they look like right now. So I'm going to do a large pullback, kind of reveal as much of the site and the areas that we saw today. Top of the screen is that West support facility with the end of line, the outbound lots where all of the cyber trucks are. And of course, the boring tunnel, the main factory, the east side, the multi-level parking garage, the warehouse on wheels, the expansion lot for the employee parking, and of course, the die shop and cathode structures here in this complex of buildings. So I hope that you enjoyed what we were able to see and talk about today. I do appreciate your support and thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care.